Good day and welcome traders. In this video today, we're going to be going through an institutional order block trading strategy. We're going to be identifying key bank levels. Before we dive into this video, hit that subscribe button because this content is going to be super juicy in this video. You will learn in this training how to find specific institutional order blocks, how to identify key bank levels, the mirror effect of price, how to use wicks to read the markets, the power of indecision candles, and the best two types of confirmation entries. Today's video is going to be filled with a lot of value, guys. I'm going to be sharing this one thing that changed how I trade order blocks. So you want to watch the whole video. What is an order block? It is the last up candle before a down move or the last down candle before an up move. So as you can see here, this is the last up candle before this massive down move. And it's an indecision candle. This is a bearish order block. And over here, this is the last down candle before this massive up move. This is what we want to pay attention to, guys. We want to notice this displacement of price in the market. This is the last bullish candle before this bearish displacement. This is the last bearish candle before this bullish displacement. This is how we're going to notice these key order blocks in the market. How do you know which order block to be paying attention to? You're looking for order blocks that have caused a major market shift. It's called displacement. And this is going to be the secret to finding good quality order blocks. How to find these valid order blocks. As you can see here, we've got this consolidation. Then we've got a rally, base and rally. When we see price going up with momentum, basing and going up with momentum again, this becomes a very strong order block because we had momentum before the order block and we had momentum after the order block. So as you can see, price is ramping up with volume, creating order block and leaving with volume. When we have this arrival with volume and leaving with volume, and we've got this order block in the center, that is an extremely valuable order block. We've got momentum candles on both sides, and we know that momentum candles are the footprints of the banks. So we can see this banks gotten involved here, driven the price up, created another order, driven the price up again, so we mark out this indecision candle and we know this is going to be a place where we want to look to take an entry. If you look at this picture, price causes a massive displacement. Can you see these massive candles, guys? These are institutional candles. We see this massive break in structure. It leaves behind this indecision candle, which we mark out. This becomes an extremely valid zone because we've got this massive displacement before this break in structure. Here's a closer up example. Price broke this massive structure with huge institutional candles, massive volume. Left behind the supply zone, which is the indecision candle, it is the start of the displacement. So imagine this bank came in and placed this massive order. The order created this ripple in the market, this massive displacement. We traced it back and we're like, that is the order of the bank. This is the liquidity. So this is the place where we're going to look to take an entry. On this four hour time frame, we can see this massive four hour displacement. The banks got in. This perfect indecision candle. Boom, there was this explosion of price. This becomes a very valid four hour demand zone. You can see how price is respecting this zone. This is our four hour demand zone. Price tapped into it, bounced, tapped into it again, and it's about to bounce off it again. Also, over here, we had a massive displacement as well. It left behind indecision candle. Price respects this zone. How perfectly. Whenever we see this massive displacement that breaks higher time frame market structure, Price respects these zones. Displacement shows us there are a lot of institutions getting involved. And this is when we want to become aware of these order blocks and wait for price to come back and tap into these zones. We marked out this demand zone. Price respects it. As you can see in this example, massive displacement. We marked out this wick, this zone. Price respects it. I want to share with you guys a pro tip. The market likes to create what I call the mirror effect. It likes to repeat itself. So whatever it does on the upside, it likes to repeat on the downside. And you will notice if you look at the charts, like for instance, look at this massive displacement over here, but look at this displacement coming down over here. 
It's the exact mirror, displacement up here, displacement down here, displacement up here, displacement down here. So what I like to pay attention to is wherever I see these mirror effects starting to take place. This can give us a method for creating a probability price loves to mirror its movements up and down in the market. This is because the same orders are being placed up as they're being placed down because we have the same big players working the market up and working them down. And it shows that these points, it shows us a deeper understanding of these key levels and reflection of key levels. Wick liquidity. Wicks are a sign of liquidity in the market. And all these things do is help us discover where these banks and institutions are playing in the market. We want to be the one by the banks and institutions side when they enter the market. Liquidity zones are areas where the bank break up their orders into smaller bits. Price likes to keep coming back to these places to fill in these orders. So bank will create an order here. We see the wick. We know that this is a place where price is going to come tap back into, tap back into high probability setups. The first touch on the zone will always be the highest probability. It's always good to keep that in mind. See, we've got this massive displacement. Here becomes the first touch. We know that the first touch is always going to be a stronger move than the second or third touch. This doesn't mean second and third won't be good moves, but we're talking about in probabilities. We have a higher probability of the first touch being a stronger reaction to the zone. Indecision candles. This is one of the things I look for first on the charts. I go to a high time frame and I spot out the indecision candles. This is where price is creating contraction in the market. And after contraction, we get expansion and then we get the trending phase. So it's always good to become aware of the indecision candles. When you see an indecision candle left behind after massive momentum move, it's a stronger confluence. So always become aware of the candles and mark them out. Indecision candles occur during times of balance between the buyers and sellers. They represent this market going into contraction phase, which is followed by the expansion. It can also be a sign of reversal. I found that to be an accurate way of finding solid supply and demand zones. Here's some examples of these dojis. Basically, it's got a long wick with a small body or just a body with no wicks. Here's an example. Price is respecting these zones completely, which were selected from indecision candles. So I went into the one hour time frame. I marked out the indecision candles and I zoomed in now and you can see price absolutely loves to respect indecision candles. Once the price comes to the indecision candle, which is a consolidation contraction zone, the buyers and sellers equalize. Whichever momentum price goes into after that determines the direction the banks have intended to take the market. So if we've got an indecision candle, we see this displacement to the downside. We know the institutions want to make moves to the downside. Confirmation entries always enter off a confirmation signal. This is super important. The best two entry types are trend line breaks and change in character. Chuck. Number one, trend line confirmation. When price comes into our higher time frame zone, we can draw a trend line and we wait for a break of that trend line. And as you can see, as the trend line breaks, it breaks this higher low. Comes back up, more than likely it'll come back down and tap into the demand zone. Number two confirmation entry is chalk, change of character. So as you can see, price is coming down. If price breaks up the higher low, that is a strong sign that there's a change in character and the momentum is shifting from the bears to the bulls. Bearish confirmation entry. So price is going up and then all of a sudden it breaks below the structure point. Price breaks below the last low low, creating a change in character, showing selling strength. Breaks this area, we mark out the order block, the indecision candle left behind. And this becomes our entry point. Here's an example of more confirmation entries. Once price comes into our four hour demand zone, which was drawn off the indecision candle, we wait for price to tap into the zone. Then we can draw a trend line, wait for a break in the trend line for a confirmation entry. Or here's another example of different forms of confirmation entries. Up here, we have the previous indecision candle supply zone. And down here is the four hour demand zone or indecision candle. Price taps into it. It comes up here. It creates equal highs, which we know is liquidity to be broken. 
but it also left behind a lower time frame indecision candle. We marked it out. Price comes, taps into this indecision candle right to the T over here. Break structure again. Now this break in structure is what gives us a confirmation to enter. And we can enter at the top of this momentum candle because this is a sign big player just entered into the market. So we enter over here. Our target becomes the supply zone above it or the indecision candle above it. So these are two very reliable entry types, guys. Number one, enter on the indecision candle. Number two, enter after the break in structure or the liquidity break after momentum candles. So we always want to look for indecision candles and momentum candles. Those two really go hand in hand because the one lets you know that the market's in balance. The other lets you know that the institution has just entered and the momentum candle lets you know what side of the market the bank has intended to move price in that specific direction. As you can see, we've got this massive move to the upside. We know price wants to move in that direction. And then we have this trending phase. So contraction, expansion, and trending. If you enjoyed this video, guys, make sure to watch my free supply and demand trading course. It's in my playlist section. There's 14 videos all at intermediate level. The link will be available at the end of this video.